Hi everyone, this is Carrie with Learn DaVinci Resolve, and today we're going to kind of get into some basics, and I want to go over the nodes on the color page. This is a very confusing thing for a lot of people, and I'll be the first to admit that I spent several months doing my coloring without ever touching nodes. I didn't really see the point of it, didn't, uh, I just didn't see the necessity of it. and. It wasn't until I really got comfortable with DaVinci Resolve and I'm like, well, I probably need to learn what these nodes are. It seems important. It's a, like a key feature. And then once I figured it out, I was like, oh, wow, this is, this is really the right way to do my, my coloring. This is going to be a beginner's guide to using nodes. And then we'll do another video that goes into some more advanced ways of using nodes. So stay right there. We'll be right back. As I said, when I started with Resolve, I probably didn't touch nodes for probably at least several months. Um, I just didn't see really the need for it. I mean, if I'm going to reset this node grade here. If I'm working on this piece of footage and you know I want to increase the saturation, I want to bump the contrast a little bit, I want to you know play with my levels, and I'll go to... Uh, Let's see, I want to change this shadow here a little bit. So that's going to be the hue versus saturation. Select that a little bit. It's kind of bluish. So I can pull that down, but I don't want to affect the sky. So I'll undo that. Let me go over here. I'll add a box around this. And do -do. now we'll come over here to our area and we can pull this down. I mean, it's like I can do so much without doing nodes. It was like, why? But all of a sudden I started getting into things that it just it didn't want to work all within one node. I mean, this was a good example. I got a power window and it creates a mask, but then what am I going to do with that mask? I'm going to have to, uh, you know, mess with it somewhere else. And, and so I really needed to learn what nodes were. So let's, let's break this down. The most simplistic way of looking at nodes is to think of them as um, layers, but on each one, you can have multiple effects. So it's not truly like layers because it's way more powerful than that, but it allows you to separate chunks of effects in their own section so that you can turn them on and off you can move them around you can reorder them without having to go back and undo 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 and and then redo things so here in this very basic example i'm going to show you how i would typically use the standard serial node and a serial node is just one right after another and just to give you a brief overview here when we look at it we have our input that goes into the input on the node, an output that goes to the next input. It's pretty simple as these string together. The blue is the alpha channel. So if there's transparency, you may need to do something with that and we'll get into that later. So initially here, I would set my exposure, but my exposure actually looks pretty good. So I'll just start off with increasing some saturation here. But when I increase the saturation, you notice one of the things that happens is the blue comes out of the shadow. So I'm going to do Option S, create a new node, go to my power window, create my box here. This is like what I was doing before. And I'll just, oops, wrong handle. I'm on my laptop today, so some things are a little trickier to do. Now you see over here that the top part is masked out because I did this power window. So now I can actually go and create another window. So now when I go over here or to my hue versus saturation and select that, now it's only going to affect what's within that power window instead of 
like messing with the entire sky. But let's say we want to now adjust the rest of the image from here. So I can right click on here and say, add a node. And this is going to be an outside node. Okay, now notice what it did. This is the exact opposite of the previous node. So now I'm gonna come over here in my color, my saturation, and I'm gonna boost my saturation back up to bring out the skies. So I have the, the frame divided into two sections because I used a power window on one, and then the next node was an outside node. So this is, can be a very, very handy feature for doing some different things. All right, so this is kind of the basics of how nodes work. You just string them together, you can move them around, you can reorganize them, and if I need to turn one off just to see what it looks like, I can just click on the number there and turn it on and off. So I can see the effect that one node has on another. Now they do have precedence, right? That the, As you stack them, the ones at the end are going to take precedence over the ones at the beginning. So the, the effects stack up as you go. So in that case, it's kind of like layers, but you can see there's, there's much more to it than just being layers themselves. So this is the standard node. This is a, a serial node. And we're going to go into a couple of the other types of nodes and show you what they're used for. Okay, in this case, we have uh, several ad color adjustments that have been done going into a parallel mixer. There's two types of mixers. There's a parallel mixer and a layer mixer, and I'll show you the differences between the two. In a parallel mixer, it takes all of the inputs and puts them together at the same time equally. So one does not have any precedence over the other. There's, uh, they all have equal, so it's going to merge or blend them all equally. So sometimes this is what you want, you know, depending on the effect that you're trying to do. So if you need to stack some effects all in one group that uh, maybe a, a glow effect on something or a haze effect, there, there's a couple, you know, there's well, probably a lot more than I can think of off the top of my head, reasons to use this type of node. Notice right now that there are three inputs on here. Uh, you can have a lot more inputs than that. You just right click and say, add one input. Now there's four. So if I wanted to add another adjustment to this group, I can just bring it in here, add it in, and tie it into the rest of this merge. All right, so the next one is a layer merge, okay? And in the layer mixer, it is done in priority with the one on the bottom of the mixer having the priority. So if you see the difference here in the previous one, they're all blended together. In this one, they're stacked on top of each other. So one effect is absolutely going to override whatever effect was higher up on the node tree here. And just like the other one, I can just add one input or remove one input and be able to go from there and create as, you know, as complex of, of a node as I need to do. So that's kind of your basics of nodes. You want to use them uh, basically as much as you see fit or as little as you see fit. I recommend having more nodes I, basically a node for every effect. I'm going to have one for my white balance, one for my exposure adjustment, one for my uh, LUT that I add, one for any ad additional adjustments, one for stabilization, one for uh, noise reduction. You know, Whatever effect I'm having, I want to do a separate node for. And the reason being, sometimes you're getting kind of into the, the weeds with something and you're like, man, it is just not looking right and you need to kind of step back and go, where did, where did things kind of go wrong? And you can do that by just troubleshooting, by turning off different nodes, seeing what the effect was and going, oh, maybe I just need to tweak that one a little bit. 
Also, it's an interesting way of experimenting with things. So let, I've got this set up here, and maybe I want to try a completely different um, grade for a moment and just see if something is going to work out a little bit differently. Uh, so I can um, just kind of delete things around, pull that over here, add some new adjustments, get rid of that one. And while there's other ways of doing that, such as versions, um, this to me is just kind of a way of experimenting with some things, maybe on the first one uh, or the first clip to see how I want that grade to go. And then I can move back and forth and try different things and see what works for me. So again, another reason to use nodes um, in your coloring. One last thing I want to show uh, before we wrap it up for today is on these two, the parallel mixer and the layer mixer, I can swap between them. So I can right click on it and say morph into a parallel node and boom, it becomes a parallel node. I can right click on it and say morph into a layer mixer node. So if I need to experiment with, you know, the different types of mixing that it does, I can just switch between the two different nodes there. So I hope this helps you out to understand why you should be learning about nodes why you want to use them, the different purposes for them. Again, this was just an intro course on the nodes within the color page, and we'll get into a lot more depth in an upcoming video. Thanks for watching, everybody. I really appreciate all the subscribers, the comments, the feedback, all the likes. Everything you guys do has been phenomenal to help build this channel along with me. And uh, so if you like it, hit subscribe. Check that bell icon to get notified whenever there's a new video. Give me a thumbs up if you'd like. I really appreciate that. It really helps the channel grow. And as always, folks, thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.